understood with the help of a trick we have a fish that is made up of rope it is having a big eye fish so this is our trick a big eye fish made up of rope so this big eye means that the uh, activation of the alpha receptors result in bigger eye mean dilation of the pupil it is known as mediasis so this this results in mediasis if i pull these two strings uh, these two pieces of the string towards this side so this will result in smaller fish or contraction of this fish so this result in uh, fish got contracted so other all the effects produced by this uh, by the activation of alpha 1 receptor are almost contraction or constriction so uh, for i also contraction contraction is there this result in radial um, contraction of the radial muscles of the eye that result in pupillary dilation so you can remember, you can remember this by big eye fish or by this method that the contraction of the radial muscles these are radial muscles if these are contracted this is result in dilation of the pupil so this is this results in dilation of the pupil next other effects are related to the contraction or constriction it causes the constriction of the blood vessel causes vasoconstriction in skin mucous membrane and viscera and it causes the constriction of the constriction of the bronchi and result in bronchoconstriction it has minor roles as compared to the beta 2 receptor beta 2 receptor results in dilation of bronchi these alpha are opposite a little bit opposite to them but they have minor role they, they their bronchoconstriction is not not much more as compared to the bronchodilation produced by the beta 2 receptors next thing is that it causes the constriction of the uterus that result in expulsion of the baby out of the uterus next is the sphincter contraction it result in contraction of the sphincter sphincters and the sphincter and uh, urethral external urethral sphincter so it will result in retention of urine and feces and another effect is it causes a contraction of the erector pili muscles that result in erection of the hair hair rising or erection of the hair and last effect is on seminal vesicles it causes a contraction of the seminal vesicles resulting in ejaculation of the sperm it can be also remembered by this point and shoot point is for parasympathetic shoot is for sympathetic point means that uh, parasympathetic result in pointing pointing is erection so parasympathetic result in erection and shoot is i mean shooting and it uh, shooting a gun it it means that ejaculation so uh, sympathetic result in ejaculation seminal vesicle contraction result in ejaculatory was involving a fish that was made up of rope so we have to go fishing under water to know the effects of alpha 2 so alpha 2 this is a fish that is a bigger fish this is alpha 2 fish this is a bigger fish and this is a alpha 1 fish this is a bigger and dangerous fish this is a smaller alpha 1 fish so this is a king as you can say this is a queen of the sea and but these are a beta 1 fish and beta 2 fish and beta 3 fish these are beta fishes beta is with b and b are for bad fishes these three bear fishes decided to take power from this queen alpha one alpha two fish alpha two fish they came now this is in this scene they are here to fight with the alpha two fish but the results of this war was that alpha two uh, being a bigger and dangerous fish ended up eating one two and three beta one two and three fishes and a certain amount of who is there so this uh, this is our story and uh, meaning of this story are that alpha alpha 2 is having effects of effects that are opposite to the beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 fishes and but the alpha 1 alpha 1 is is a smaller and it is innocent little fish so alpha 2 little bit favors the alpha 1 fish effect so alpha 2 effect effects are a little bit of similar to alpha 1 effects but these are opposite to the beta 1 2 and 3 uh, three fishes so now we are going to discuss the if they are effects so beta 2 is um, expanding things beta 2 is basically expanding things i will be telling you in the 
a video of beta 2 effects it is expanding things like secretion so beta alpha 2 is going to decrease alpha beta 2 is increasing secretions alpha 2 is decreasing secretions it results in decreasing salivary and other secretions of the GIT. Next is it increases the insulin release. Uh, it decreases the insulin release because beta 2 is having effect on insulin release that it causes the increased secretion of insulin. But uh, alpha 2 is causing decreased secretion of the insulin. It effects is decreased insulin secretion. Next is it is a uh, weak having weak opposition of effect of betas because they are all eaten up so it is having the weak opposition of effects of betas so another effect is it is weakly favor the effect of alpha 1 because both are fishes so another is uh, there was certain some amount of coo there so it means that it increases the platelet aggregation it increases the platelet aggregation because it was having certain some amount of coo there but it is having weak favor of alpha 1 and weak opposition of beta 2 it is not completely oppos opposing them but is it having weak opposition of effects of beta and weak favor of the effects of alpha these two effects uh, we will uh, we will discuss the effects of beta in uh, next videos uh, basically beta 1 is having effects on cardiac and renal and beta 2 is having effects on various structures and it is expanding things bronchodilation, bronchodilation things like that and increase insulin secretion is also there and decrease secretion of the decrease insulin secretion is there and decrease secretion of the GI by the beta word beta so the shape of the beta resembles the shape of the heart Another thing, another this is the heart shape, and this is B, and this beta shape. We can remember this that it is having effects on the heart, and effects of the beta of one on heart are there. It causes the increased heart rate, increased contractility, increased cardiac output. So this is the stimulation of beta one is in increased heart rate, increased contractility, increased cardiac output. And next organ that resembles the beta is that this kidney is having the shape of beta. B B. This is B and this kidney is having the shape of B. So the effect on the kidney by the stimulation of beta 1 is that it increases the renin secretion through the kidney. The track can be remembered by this mnemonic that the uh, two there are two beta 2 means that two betas are there. These are two betas with uh, side to side and their shape resembles to the butterfly. So their shape resembles to the butterfly and butterfly expand their wings to fly. So our mnemonic is butterfly expanding its wings. So the effects of the beta 2 will be expansion of the things or dilation of the things or increase of certain things. So these two betas also resembles the shape of the lungs. Lungs, so our effects will be also there on the lungs. There are two lungs and two betas, and their shape resembles the lungs, so effects will be also there on the lungs. And uh, to their effects on the other organs are that it relaxes the smooth muscles of the GIT. It relaxes the smooth muscles of the GIT that results in the GI motility. A decrease GI motility so it is in decrease GI motility or decrease movement of the food in GIT next is it expanded it expands the bronchi mean it is in the bronchodilation so in previous picture we have seen that the two betas were there one beta was there one beta was there so it was having forming the lungs so it is expanding the uh, caliber of the bronchioles resulting in bronchodilation like butterfly expanding its wings next effects are on the uh, vessels blood vessels it causes a increased caliber of the blood vessels mean vasodilation in a uh, two liver and skeletal muscle it results in the vasodilation toward liver and skeletal muscle so blood is more pumped toward the muscles and liver another thing is it causes the expansion of the uterus and results in uh, it keeps baby inside so it is expanding the uterus another effects of the beta 2 is that it is increasing the insulation re insulin release so effects of the alpha 2 was it is it was decreasing the 
yeah. insulin release while the beta 2 is increasing beta is with butter to butterfly expanding expanding mean insulation uh, increase increase insulin release is there in cases of beta 2 receptor stimulation so another thing we have to remember uh, this is that the in it it increases the insulin level and at the same time it is increasing the blood glucose level so it means that the blood glucose level is increase and it is increasing also the insulin so this increase in insulin result in the more uh, utilization of uh, glucose in skeletal muscles so we can have fight and flight mechanism uh, that is the mechanism of stimulation of the sympathetic system so we are having fight and flight mechanism it is a beta 2 is increasing insulin increasing blood glucose level it is increasing blood glucose level and this insulin is at the same time decreasing it by giving this can be remember with this word 3 and our trick is that this picture this picture is having three betas and this resembles the triglyceride so beta 3 is having effects on the triglyceride and its effects on the triglyceride is that it it so its function is lipolysis so it increases the lipolysis so stimulation of the beta 3 receptor results in lipolysis so this was the effects of beta 3 receptor stimulation into two broad categories one are direct acting cholinomimetic is direct acting are those that increase the acetylcholine production or they are similar to acetylcholine and they enhance the acts of acetylcholine basically directly and other are indirect acting cholinomimetic are those drugs that inhibit the acetylcholine acetase enzyme that in turn serves the decrease utilization or breakdown of the acetylcholine resulting higher amounts of acetylcholine in synapse so direct acting cholinomimetics and indirect acting cholinomimetics direct acting cholinomimetics on both receptors muscarinic and nicotinic receptors examples are acetylcholine and carbacol and others are their drugs that acts on muscarinic receptors example are bethanicol and pilocarpine pentacol and pentacarpine and third are that act on nicotine receptors these include nicotine and succinylcholine to remember then i have a mnemonic that is anti can bath pillow but not succi anti can bath pillow but not succi anti is for and acetylcholine or can is for carbacol bath is for pentacol pillow is for pilocarpine not is for nicotine and succi is for succinylcholine first two are acting on both receptors second two are acting on muscarinic receptors only and third two are acting on nicotinic receptors so all the one called anti and bas pillow but no succinylcholine these were direct acting cholinomimetics now in direct acting cholinomimetics they can be broadly categorized into three subgroups one are carbamates second are alcohols and third are organophosphates Mnemonic for them is Newtonian physics and its paramathematics. Newtonian physics and its paramathematics. Newtonian carbamates are two: Newtonian and physics, neostigmine and physostigmine. Newtonian physics, neostigmine and physostigmine. Second are alcohols. Alcohol is the alcohol. Alcohol causes addiction, and addiction must be ended. So Newtonian physics ended. Adrophonium is alcohol. third or organophosphates organophosphates are those drugs that are having thione in their name at the end so para thione and mela thione para mathematics para thione and mela thione phosphates so these was indirect acting cholinomimetics so this was about the classification of the cholinergic drugs and various examples from them in next video i will be going to cover drugs individually thank you video we are going to discuss about the polynomimetic drugs or best best mimetic drugs individually previously we have discussed their classification now we are going to discuss them individually first of all direct acting polynomimetics direct acting polynomimetics uh, includes acetylcholine acetylcholine acts on both receptors muscarinic and nicotinic receptors 
it is not used therapeutically because it is rapidly destroyed by cholinesterases. Acetylcholine therapeutically because it is destroyed rapidly. Next is carbacol. Carbacol is with C and C mean C sounds like S W C. C that is uh, with I. C is with I. So this C S W is with I. So it is used is in I. It is used in glaucoma treatment. So it is used in glaucoma treatment. Other uses of the carbacol are rare because of high potency and long duration of the action. No, the other uses of the carbacol are rare. So it is uh, carbacol is treatment. Next is bethanicol. Bethanicol is acting acts on muscarinic uh, receptors only. B is uh, bethanicol is with B and B for bladder atony and B for bowel atony. So it is used in bladder atony and bowel atony. So it is used in these two conditions. Next is pilocarbine. Pilocarbine also acts on muscarinic receptors like bethanicol, but issues are different than bethanicol. It is uh, pilocarbine is uh, with P is patient P P is for patient patient mean patient is having GCS GCS is Glasgow comma scale we use in that so pilocarpine mnemonic is GCS patients GCS so GCS G is for glaucoma treatment it is used in glaucoma treatment cystic fibrosis diagnosis and incision syndrome it is used in glaucoma treatment in cases of chronic chronically it is used in open angle glaucoma while acutely it is used in angle clear glaucoma it is used in angle clear glaucoma in acute cases and chronically it is used in cop c chronic op is open cop acute is a angle is a angle clear glaucoma and chronic is chronically it is used in open angle glaucoma so this was about the the glaucoma treatment. Next is about the cystic fibrosis. It is used in diagnosis of the cystic fibrosis. A uh, uh, test done is sweat test to measure the sodium chloride concentrations excreted in the urine or sweat excreted in the sweat. It is used in uh, diagnosis of the cystic fibrosis. These were drugs that were direct acting cholinomimetics. Now indirect acting cholinomimetics includes first of all neostigmine. Neo is uh, pneumonia for it is new pump. New pump and new is for neostigmine and pump is for P is for pseudo obstructive obstruction of the colon. First of all pseudo obstruction of the colon. Next is U is for urinary dentures and lymphogenal anesthesia. It is used in general anesthesia to avoid urinary retention. M is for mycenian gravis. Um, it is used in urinary retention because it relaxes the sphincters because it is parasympathomimetic parasympathetic system relaxes the sphincter so it is used in urinary retention or pseudo obstructive colon so it is it relaxes the symptoms next is mycenia gravis it is used in mycenia gravis because in mycenia gravis antibodies are produced against uh, acetylcholine receptors so these are indirect choline uh, acting and they inhibit the conversion, uh, inhibit the breakdown of the acetylcholine by acetylcholine esterase. So, in in turn, they increase the acetylcholine concentration in the postsynaptic membrane. So, they are used in mycenia gravis. P U M P P is for pregnancy test. It uh, provokes the menstruation in women with delayed menstruations. If a uh, woman is with delayed menstruation, she will have a menstruation and if she is having pregnancy then she will not have menstruation so it is used in pregnancy test so uses uses of the uh, pilocarpine are new a uh, new stigmine are new pump pump pseudo and urine obstruction mycenia gravis and pregnancy test next is physo stigmine physo is uh, with p and uh, we have we say wrestler to P Pahlavan. So our uh, Pakistani famous wrestler was Gama Pahlavan. So P is the physical segment. It is Pahlavan and Gama Pahlavan was Pakistani famous wrestler. G is for glaucoma treatment. A is for atropa belladonna poisoning or atropine poisoning. M is for mycenia gravis and A is for Alzheimer disease. A disease. It is used in Alzheimer's disease, mycelium gravis, atropa melanoma poisoning, and glaucoma. So this um, physostigmine is gamma pahlavan. And next is 
aerophonium aerophonium is used in myasthenia diag myasthenia gravis uh, diagnosis e aerophonium is with e e if we rotate e uh, to left uh, to right side it will become m so it is used in myasthenia gravis first of all it is used in myasthenia gravis uh, tension test is performed in myasthenia gravis uh, uh if uh, a patient is having myasthenia gravis and we are gi uh, we give him aerophonium this will result in this will reduce the muscle weakness because uh, patient was having acetylcholine but its uh, uh, receptors were not working so if we give him aerophonium its acetylcholine concentration increased and it overcomes a weakness so in if patient is having myasthenia gravis muscle weakness will be reduced if patient is having cholinergic crisis cholinergic crisis means that patient is having less amount of uh, acetylcholine patient is having less amount of acetylcholine we have given the patient indirect acting cholinomimetic indirect acting cholinomimetic inhibits the metabolism of the acetylcholine patient is already having crisis of the acetylcholine so if uh, whether the metabolism is stopped or not the crisis is there so muscle weakness is will persist if we give him aerophonium his muscle weakness becomes uh, less so it is having myasthenia gravis if it became worse or it remains there equally it is cholinergic crisis so it is uh, this test is known as tension test Uh, I explain this thing again. T tension test is that we give him aerophonium that is uh, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So we give him acetylcholinesterase inhibitor in myasthenia gravis. Patient is having acetylcholine, but its receptors are uh, not working because of antibodies. Bodies. So when we have given as aerophonium, acetylcholine concentration increase and uh, muscle weakness is uh, reduced. But in cases of a cholinergic crisis, muscle weakness remains there, or be, it became worse because patient is not having acetylcholine in a, in enough amount. So patient is not having acetylcholine, so crisis will be there whether we uh, inhibit the metabolism enzyme. So metabolism enzyme is inhibited by this drug, so it will work in. Uh, my senior gravis but it will not work in cholinergic crisis so this was about the tension test and uh, this concludes about the direct acting cholinomimetics and indirect acting cholinomimetics i hope you will understand them